Welcome to the second talk, VI Everywhere, what's your superpower? My name is Mike Molevsky, you can find me at, at Ceramic on Twitter, GitHub, whatever. I'm a developer at Fresho. Uh, as mentioned, we're hiring, so uh, come and talk to me or email me at michael at fresho.com.au. Uh, another kind of cool thing we do is a lot of pairing and testing, and as Selena mentioned, uh, six layers of outside-in behavioural-driven stuff. So. Uh, come and talk to me about testing any time. VI everywhere, what's your superpower? Doing a talk is easy, right? Yeah, we're all gathered here, we've all got our beers in hand and eating food, and it's one of these primal experiences for humans to get together, have, have food, share food, and share a story, right? And that's where kind of I come in, and I've, I've been in your seat for the eight, last eight to ten years, coming to these Ruby meetups and thinking, Easy, easy. It's easy to kind of get up there. You just need two things. One, you need to have something to talk about and something that for people to take away, like an objective of what people can take away. And the second thing is too agile, right? Do an MVP, get it out to somebody really quickly and then iterate, iterate, iterate. Get that talk polished up and then come here and present and everyone's just going to enjoy the story, okay? Now, my mind was blown August last year, 2017, in this very room... Tom Ridge gave a very short talk, 15 minutes. You can look it up on Ruby website and see the talk. And he talked about one other thing. He said, tell your story. It's not point just talking about technology when you don't have your perspective and we as humans can't share our view of my perspective of how I got to where I am and, and you, you can maybe share your perspective on that. So easy, right? Easy. There's three points that you have to do. You have to have an objective, you have to tell a story, and then MVP, iterate, start early, right? But I'm a classic procrastinator. <laughs> so three weeks ago, I went in, and uh, first time I did a GitHub issue. I did a GitHub issue, thank you. you. Everyone should try it one day. Say, hey, I can do a talk about this. And then I thought, okay, what's my objective? Well, it's, I'd like to use VI, and somebody pairing with me once said, hey, you know what, the way you use VI, it's like a superpower. I thought, yeah, cool. And then I thought, I'll change it up a little bit. I'm just going to do VI everywhere. So I started installing VI on my phone. I just showed somebody. I have VI on my phone. I saved the file. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> I've got VI in my browser, right? I put Vimium or some plug in. It was awesome. Like, all these shortcut things happen, and I can drive my browser without... A mouse, and it was kind of amazing. But then I jump on somebody else's machine, and you know, at Fresho, we're a high repairing environment, and I start hitting these keys, and they say, Whoa, what are you doing? And I go, Oh, you don't have the Vimium plug in, I can't use your machine. <laughs> but I'm all about inclusiveness. Anyway, so <laughs> three weeks ago, Selena's starting her talk, and I said, Ah, oh, you know, Michael's rules of how to do a talk. Are you ready to share your talk with me? She said, no, not, not yet. It's a bit too long and I need to cut some things out. Two weeks ago, she said, all right, I'm finally ready. We sit down and the talk is pretty good. And, and as you've seen, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome uh, listening to it today. And then she said, well, Michael, what about your talk? Are you going to share your talk? I said, oh, yeah, not yet, not yet. I haven't put VI everywhere yet, okay? <laughs> and then uh, it comes to Sunday, like we're talking four days ago, my wife happens to be going away, so I've got four kids and a puppy that needs to be run one hour every morning. And she says, Michael, you ready to do your talk? And I said, well, sure, of course. And I took her down this rabbit hole of two hours of VI shortcuts, and I said, aren't you happy? Aren't you proud? Like, how awesome am I? And she said, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Where was the story? Where was the, the you know, where was the whole build-up? And I said, oh, there's no room for a story. <laughs> anyway, she tore it apart, and I thought, well, what do I do now? Iterate. So in an hour, I represented it with all her feedback. It got better. Then I presented it again uh, on Monday. This is version three. Uh, and amongst other people, Selena was there and some people from work, and they gave me some feedback. Then version, the next version was the next day, and every day I'd come to work and say, hey, I've got a new talk. Completely, completely different. Um, anyway, the learning there is 
do it early, start early, <laughs> share, share things, whether it's coding, whether it's anything, share it early on. So rather than VI everywhere, which I worked out, and so basically Selena kind of said, hey, Michael, you're saying VI everywhere, but at the end of the talk, version five, you're basically saying it's a bad idea. And I thought, well, <laughs> if anyone knows me, and if somebody can be contrarian to their own ideas, yeah. Anyway, so I've changed it. I've changed it. We're going to do VI on the command line, but it's still a superpower. I'm guessing we've talked a little bit about VI. Do we all know what VI is? It's an editor. It's a way to modify documents, and most of the time those documents are hopefully our computer programs, because what else would you want to write? <laughs> Why is VI called VI? Well, back a long time ago, there was an editor, and in, in uh, computer kind of parlance, you try and shorten things. So X was the editor, and it was short for extended, because extended was just too long to type. It was a line editor. Does anyone know what a line editor is? Yeah, a couple of... Lines. It's just lines, right? No, you just got one line, and usually these things were set up without a graphical interface, because back in the day, there was no screens. You couldn't just have a screen attached. You couldn't see it. You had a teleprinter attached, so you had a keyboard and a printer. And as you type things out, the printer would say, right, this is your program. You go, oh, made a mistake on line 15. I'm going to write a line editor command to say, hey, fix that mistake on line 15, or maybe add something else in there. At some stage, though, X was expanded to have a visual mode. And the way to call that visual mode was um, with the shortest unambiguous abbreviation VI. And then somebody ended up calling, creating a new editor called VI because they took inspiration from X. So that's where we get VI from. And for those who are upset with me calling it VI, it's Vim, because VI has moved on and it's been improved. So now we have a Vim, which is a VI improved. And I'm guessing a number of us know at least one command, and that is, how the hell do I get out of here? <laughs> All right? Supposedly one of... And actually, coming back to preparing for a talk, right, I, I said this, a number of you guys are laughing, like, yeah, yeah, it's the most searched for answer on Stack Exchange. <laughs> and putting this slide up here is like three seconds. It's like, hey, I'll put this slide in with a colon Q, how to quit out of here. I then had to search on Stack Exchange and find out exactly how many people have upvoted that and how many people have claimed there's other things. And I don't know whether it's the most searched for, but it certainly is. So. Let's go and demo uh, what is VI. Um, so, and anyone can do this. You can follow along at home. Uh, most likely, at any stage, you can uh, do that, which is open it. So you call VI or Vim, whichever you have open. Um, and then you notice I've got a blank screen. I've got a one up here. Uh, it tells me I'm on line one. And I start, so I'm going to turn on a key uh, visualizer called key, 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 Keycaster. I'm going to show you all the keys I'm typing. So at this stage, you get into this VI editor and you start typing and nothing's going on. And you're going, what the hell? What's going on, right? And guess what? You're in normal mode. This is normal mode. This is all good. But what you want to do is you want to insert some text. So with the shortest, un the shortest abbreviation of that is I to insert. And what's happened, I've just hit the letter I, and the cursor has changed, and it's written down here, insert. So presumably I'm in insert mode, and now I can touch, or I can type, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Okay, and now I'm looking at my cheat sheet, I go, hey, I can get out of that and go back into normal mode, because here all I can do is type, with an escape. So as soon as I hit escape, it takes me out of where it said insert. I'm now in normal mode, which allows me to do a number of things like move around. So if I want to go up, I would press the uh, K key. So K for up, H for left, L for right. You get the idea. And why have they done that? Because that's the home row. So if you are touch typist, your fingers are always on those letters and you're very quickly able to move around. And if you look at a lot of layouts of keyboards where the arrows are, they're always down off to the side. So anytime you're going off to the mouse or down to the arrows, you're kind of breaking the flow of what you're doing. Uh, interestingly, I've written on the slide, there is an X mode. So at any stage, 
I can type colon, and what's happened is the cursor comes down here and it's actually taken me into X mode or line editing mode. At this stage, I can do something like one, and the X command for one says, take me to the first line. So if I wanted to go to the last line, which is three, I could do that. Uh, looking there, it says, hey, uh, you can search for things. I can go slash to search for something, and this is using um, uh, basically a, a basic version of regular expressions if I search for the letter E. It finds that there are four of them, and then I can go N next to go through each one of those things. I can also replace things. So I can do colon to take me back into X mode, and I can substitute. Clearly, the way to write substitute is S, because it's the shortest unambiguous abbreviation of it. And then I will say, well, three, I don't want that to be three anymore. I want that to be fizz. Um, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Ah, oh, I'm on the wrong line, right? Because I was not doing it globally. So I go KK up to here, and I go colon, and then in here, if I use the arrow key, I can use three fizz, and it changes fizz. At which stage you're going, get me out of here. Oh, that didn't even work, right? Because in this case, I've created a text file and said, well, you don't want to just delete that unless you tell me explicitly. At this stage, I can do exclamation mark. And colon Q exclamation mark gets me out of here. Thank goodness, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and now I'm saying, well, hang on. I'm talking about VI on the command line. And, and, and by the way, I don't even really use Vim all that much. I use it for little side projects. But if you told me to do my day-to-day -day job in Vim, I go, I need these plugins. I need to be able to jump between files. I need to have buffers. I need to have multi-paste things. The people who do use it, I take my hats off. But I'm hoping this talk, for those people who open their eyes to certain other ways of using it, if you don't use VI, maybe this will show you some hints to try and use it in a small sense. So I'm going to demo VI on the command line. So the first thing that I'm saying to do is set minus O, which is setting your options to VI. I'm now in VI mode. So everything I want to do, I can do this here. So let's say I wrote one, two, three. So immediately I'm in insert mode. So what do I do? I want to go into normal mode. I click escape, escape, and you've seen the cursor jumps back a little bit. Now I can use any of my VI uh, tricks here. For example, if I want to go to the beginning of the line, I just do a caret character, which is the same as regex, takes me to the beginning of the line. If I want to go to the end of the line, a dollar takes me there. If I want to go back a word, I go back. If I want to change a word, shortest abbreviation CW, it makes that word disappear, and then I write fizz, okay, escape, and all of a sudden, all of these command things that I wanted to do, I've got there. Uh, one other one worth ch showing is if I wanted to change the word to two, and then I said escape, and then I said no, I made a mistake. I have undo ability, so you to undo, and it's undone that, right? And then I could go over to the next word and I say, hey, what I wanted to do was change the word to, capital two, I can redo the last thing I did. So I'm going to press dot to redo. And magically, that command has been redone. Uh, sorry, is that? Mm -hmm. So my understanding of what you're saying would be the reverse, which is in Bash, I can run VI shortcuts. So this is, this is, a, this is a Bash yeah. session, not a VI session. And I can put a quote here, and I can go escape. I could jump to the beginning of the line, and I could say uh, insert, echo, and in this case I'm saying, right, this is a Bash command because I'm, I'm, I'm on Bash. Echo, one, two, three, enter, and it echoes one, two, three. Mind-blowing, right? It's a superpower! So, let's go. Where next? Oh, get, how, do, how, how do you get me out of this VI mode, right? You want to get out of this VI mode, you do set minus O, Emacs. Has anyone heard of Emacs? Right? Emacs is a, an editor as well. So, hang on, I've jumped out of VI to Emacs to get out of it. What is the default of Bash? Well, actually, so if I do set minus O, it will give me all of these options, and there's too many of them to see, so I'm going to clear the screen. Set minus O, and I'm going to grep that for anything, anything that mentions VI or Emacs, 
and it says, oh, Emacs is on and VI is off. And if I then say, well, I want to set my option to VI and then run that command again, it says Emacs is off and VI is on. So by default, all of us are using Emacs on the command line if we're running some common version of Bash or Shell, right? <laughs> But the default bash option on the command line. Uh, and, you know, if we did this talk about Emacs shortcuts, my limit is A to the beginning of the line, E to the end of the line, R to do reverse search. It's about it, right? So, you know, it would have been a much shorter talk. Um, <coughs> so, why, where's the story about this and why did I do this? So, I started like a lot of us, probably writing a print Hello World program. Not like Selena doing like hexadecimal things in assemblers. No, no, just just print, print, print hello world. And I was a hunt and peck typist, right? You know, one of those really slow people that you kind of pair with sometimes and they're looking at the thing and they're typing and typing and you know what? Often they come up with some great code, but you kind of get frustrated that they're slow. And especially when they're on the command line. So, you know, you may imagine here on the command line, somebody saying, oh, right, uh, ls, uh, yeah, space, yeah, that looks good. And then I'm looking for the per uh, object and maybe, oh, tab that, you know, a bit of auto completion, that helps you along. Uh, my projects and, and, and our daily dojo, which I should practice every day, and then be like, Right, and, they, and you do that, and you kind of go, oh, okay, that's a bit slow, and this other person's touch type something right out there. But because I read some books and they said, real hackers use VI and real VI users use VI on the command line, I set my options to have VI. So at this stage, if I then said, hey, I want my, my talk, no, talk's not there. Yeah, talk's there. I want my talk and maybe I want to make a copy of it. So I jump to the beginning uh, and I say copy and then I say, well, I want to talk.copy, copy.md. And all of a sudden, I can jump through these things, and people are going, "Oh, okay, that's that's kind of neat." And if I said, "Oh, well, you know, how many slides do you have in this talk?" I could say, "Well, I want to less my talk and jump to the end." And I've been at pro on, on projects where people have got a new laptop, and they said, "I need to set it up." And I go, "What do you need to set up for?" Well, the cursor doesn't move quickly enough. I said, "Why do you need the cursor?" Because because Michael, when when I'm 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 here, I need to get to the end. I need to really have a fast cursor. And I say, well, why don't you just learn how to jump to the end of the line? Like we're developers, dry, don't repeat yourself. If you're doing it more than three times, there's got to be a faster way to do it. And then if you said, right, I want to, whoops, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If I'm there and I'm saying, right, oh, well, I want to find out how many slides and all the slides are marked down, so I want to ref for something at the beginning of the line with a hash, and then maybe I want to uh, word count. Oh. <laughs> As I press reopen. <laughs> I hope that's not a password. <laughs> uh, I did actually have a moment with my wife on Sunday <laughs> uh, where I set something up and the B key stopped working. Like everywhere on my system, the B key just stopped working. And it was, uh, and I thought, and actually, it stopped working in VI mode, but it worked in Emacs mode. <laughs> I can't change this. I can't change this right now. <laughs> uh, hang on. Oh, I'm in the right directory, right? So I just open the talk. Uh, what are we doing? Presenting. Where are we up to? Somewhere here. Right, so um, I was showing you a, a number of things that I could probably jump around and terminals never, never quit on me. The other thing I can do is, is search history really well, right? And if I look at my history uh, and do a word count of that, I've got like 32,000 lines. So if you need to do anything, I don't, I don't need a GP for my git pull alias. I can just do a search for TP, git pull, right? Uh, the last time I did a stash thing, I could just look for, oh, that was the status, but 
I can look at all sorts of weird stuff that I've done. Oh, there you go, git stash, stash apply or something like that. It's all in my, in my history and using VI shortcuts allows me to search that much easier, I find. So, coming back to the presentation, why was it a super bow? It allowed me to move around more quickly. Ah, oh, one thing I did, oh, I did show you, right? You can do edits on the whole command. Did I show you that? Yes? No, I didn't. Uh, let's do that. Let's break the terminal again. So let's say I was uh, lessing uh, my... Right, so I've got this complicated thing and I've, I've, uh, I've gone here and I've gone, oh, I don't want the unique. So this is giving me a unique count of slides. Um, but I'm stuck in here, I'm going, oh, how do I edit this? At any stage, I can press V. And what's V going to do? It's going to take me into visual mode. And what's visual mode going to do? It's actually going to take my command line and put it in VI mode, like in VI. It's opened it in VI. I can now do anything I want to do in VI. Uh, I can say, right, this is complicated. I may want to format it differently, uh, right, to say, just to show you what we're kind of doing. And then go, right, I don't want unique. I just want to less this project, pipe that into grep, sort, sort that. I don't even need to sort that. I want to do that. At which stage, WQ, which saves a temporary file and runs that command. So the command that I have that may be a little bit too long, I can then edit fully in VI, right? So this is, this is the can edits whole command. Cursor speed, no longer an issue, and no need for aliases. That is the superpower. Ah, cool. Now, we're going to do a quick little exercise about superpowers. I want everybody to turn to their partner, to somebody next to them. Ryan, you can come up here. You can demonstrate with me. Excellent. And we all know how to count to one, two, three, right? But we're going to alternate. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four. No, then you start one again. Oh. All right, ready, ready? Let's go, go, it's go. Too hard. So one, two, three, one, two. Three. Okay, I want everyone to try it. Try it with the person next to you. Just four times. Ready, set, go. <laughs> all right, all right. Pretty, uh, pretty easy. Pretty easy, right? Now we're going to change it. You're going to stay here for one little second. We're going to change it. One is clap, two is click, and three is drink or shake or something like that. Ready? So I'm going to go... <laughs> then you go. Drink. Right, okay, so try that, try that. You can sit down, Ryan. <laughs> okay, hopefully you get the idea. It's, it's much, much harder. You have a superpower of counting. One, two, three, but you can't bring up these new actions. So what you're doing most likely in your brain is you're pinning your actions to something you do know, which is the one, two, three. You're translating a one. What did he say? Clap to this, and then you're stuffing it up, and it's much, much harder to do. How did we? How, how do we end up learning things like numbers and letters? We probably learnt them through rote learning. We probably just have them as a complete second nature. Now, right, learning, like, who wants to do that? Like, that's not high-level thinking. We're all about programming and doing amazing things. But rote learning is a cornerstone of high-level thinking. Without freeing up your brain to be able to do something a little bit more complicated, you can't go further. Uh, so, examples. The alphabet, numbers, riding a bike, times tables. If you don't know numbers, you're not going to do times tables. And if you don't know times tables, it's going to be really hard for you to do Multi long multiplication or long division, things like that. Um, oh, yeah. another, another example of this. Stop yourself from reading the next slide, right, without covering your eyes. Yeah, come on. Right, you couldn't. You saw that and immediately you had a second sense of going, that says Ruby. Beer? Yeah, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> so language is another thing that, that is rote learn. And imagine if you had to think like you did about the clapping and clicking, to do language to communicate with somebody. Like, you don't want that. You want to then take it to this next level. So what can we do to have a second nature power as a programmer? You could learn to touch type. And as I said, I started as a, as a, as a slow kind of programmer and I thought, well, I'm doing very intellectual things here. Of course I can't think any faster than I can type. 
But once you learn to touch type and you get to think something and it just magically appears on the screen, you kind of go, oh my God, this is a game changer. Keyboard shortcuts like I'm showing you here on the command line are another thing that becomes, if you become second nature, gives you ability to kind of take it to the next level. Languages and even techniques. I've been in a number of places where people have, uh, have said, hey, we're going to do a, a TDD Carter, so a test driven development practice. And developers argue for an hour about how to set up the project and what to write as the first test. And they're doing this day in, day out. But when you kind of take them out of that environment, they don't have that second nature. These are things you can practice. So how can you wrote, learn some of the things I said? Well, maybe you could use a little drill. So here I've come up with a drill. So you would go and, st and say, set vi. You would then start writing a program, Ruby minus e puts hello. Hello, probably spelling doesn't matter. My typing is not that good. And it writes, it's a little program that writes hello. And then at this stage, I'm going, oh, cool. I want to escape to go into, into normal mode, K to go into the, my last command, dollar to go to the end. Uh, maybe I should cast my things. B to go back, I to insert, space, row, row, and then enter. And all of a sudden, I've got hello, row, row. So I've done a little bit of practice and then go back to safety, go back to your Emacs. <laughs> Wonderful, right? <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then repeat, right? Practice, practice, practice. The beauty of that exercise is you can do that anywhere. Maybe not Windows. Uh, you can do that anywhere, right? Um, you, you, can, you can, in fact, you can even do it on a Docker instance without VI installed because those VI command line bindings are, come default within Bash somehow, magically. Uh, I'm not going to demo that. Um, let's go, next slide. So. It was my second nature, right? Everywhere I'd go, these touch typers were smashing the backspace key because they were making mistakes, whereas I was never making a mistake, going slowly, but I was hammering the escape key. And if you ever pair with me and, you have, you, and you're using Emacs on the command line, you will often see me use your terminal and hit escape and KKKK because I want to go to the, like, the second last command to re rerun the test. And then you're going, well, what are you doing? I'm going, oh, it's just second nature to me. And doing this it was kind of interesting because, you know, I was... Why is that okay? Oh yeah, yeah. I was I was a couple of years out of uni. I was working at Telstra at that stage, and we we're building a system. And every so often, you have to connect to the database, and I'd be there writing a query. You know, I've put one up there just just so you can kind of imagine. And I'm there on line three, and maybe I've made a spelling mistake, and I need to go to the top. Second nature said, "Hammer the escape key," and it did nothing. Right? Did nothing. And then one day, one day, I'm there in my DB console, and I hammer escape and some other keys because I just got angry. And then I go escape K, and magically, my cursor goes up in the line, and I go, oh, B, and I go back a word, and I go, oh, carrot, and I go to the beginning of the line, and all of a sudden, I'm going, I have, com I have VI bindings in my DB console. This is awesome. If you've got this massive query and you're building it iteratively, all of a sudden, I can jump to and fro and change words. You know what I did? I left that terminal open for as long as I could, because it's like... <laughs> It's like, I don't know how I got there, but this is, and Selena was like, this is gold dust, right? It's happening, it's there, I need this open. <laughs> Until the DBA admin told me off. Um, <laughs> since then, I have researched it. Uh, basically, the key combination I was doing, and in certain, I couldn't do a demo, because it kind of sometimes worked, sometimes didn't, was escape, enter, escape, enter. And, <clears throat> oh, no. I thought there was a, sorry. All oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah, so VI, so basically what that meant was that VI command, uh, VI shortcuts work anywhere read line works. And I've worked out how to do it in Postgres. If you want to do Postgres, you update your input RC, and then Postgres runs read line, so all VI command line arguments will be there. If you want to do it in your MySQL, it's an edit RC file. If you stuff those around the wrong way, that's when the B key doesn't work. <coughs> <laughs> now, you may be asking, what is read line? Right, what's this read line? So, best example, I go on a holiday with the kids and all the board games come out and start playing this, that and the other and we finish up with Cluedo, right? And Cluedo is kind of this guessing game of who killed who with what in what room. And as every programmer does after a bit of playing games with the kids, you go, 
I could write that game. Be easy. So I thought, okay, you know, Agile, MVP, I need to get this to market really quickly. I decided, no UI, it's just going to be a text-based thing. So I had this thing, you know, I, I had this thing. Oh, it was kernel, how do you spell that? Mustard with a candle stick in the kitchen, right? And there was MVP, VP. it passed well, hopefully, and you know, it said, hey, it was kernel mustard with a candlestick in the kitchen, and I went, oh, that, that's cool. That, it was wrong, it was, it was the wrong one. And then I went, oh, I have to type that again? Shit, man, this kind of sucks, this is a bad UI. So, what did I do? Well, I, I kind of thought, well, wouldn't it be great to have VI bindings there? So then I thought, well, can, you, can I do this in Ruby? So Ruby minus E is to execute Ruby on the command line. And then I'm going to oh, we'll do a new line, and then I'm going to require the read line gem. And then I'm going to say, well, let's have a loop. So while I'm going to read something into a variable, I'll call the variable line equals read line. And I'm going to create a prompt, which is a greater than symbol, and true. And then I want to P the line, so print out the line and end the loop and close the quote. Now, obviously, if you can imagine, if I'm here, without v line, uh, VI bindings and I made a mistake somewhere, it'd be really hard. I didn't make a mistake, I think. Uh, yes, I did. Ah, there you go, right? No, why didn't, oh, I'm not even in VI. No. Right, so uh, how good is that, eh? No, still, read line, undefined method. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't do that, right? So I jump a couple of words. How good is that? I thought I was, yeah. uh, I need read line dot read line. I'll clear the screen. And now I have my prompt. So now if I write it was Mrs. White with the hammer in the shed. And then I go, well, I've got read line now, so I can go escape, okay. Oh, I can jump two words forward. I can change Mrs. White to change two words to, uh, I'm not gonna do kernel, Mr. Smart, I don't know. And I can then jump to the end and and go to the kitchen, and all of a sudden, anywhere I have a Ruby command line or a Ruby program that's reading, executing, printing a loop like this, I can have my VI shortcuts, which makes me much more productive for a shitty UI. And as I mentioned, read, execute, print, loop, a REPL. Has anyone heard of a REPL before? So a REPL, is your read, execute, print loop that is IRB. So IRB is if you want interactive Ruby on the command line. It's also Rails console. And guess what? In all of those, you get to have VI command shortcuts. Uh, too bad if you're doing Node or Elixir because they don't support it, but <laughs> there is a wrapper called RL wrap, and if you're running a Mac, it's as simple as brew install and wrap that, and all of a sudden you can be playing with Node and Elixir as well. We don't have time for a superpower example. Uh, I hope I've inspired you to get a superpower of your own, whether it's VI shortcuts or touch typing or problem solving with TDD. And remember, the answer is always practice, practice, practice. Thank you. My name is Michael. The presentation is on my GitHub account. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your um, presentation. It was uh, really impressive. Um, I noticed that you're currently in set dash o uh, Emacs instead of VI uh, by default. Is there a reason for that, or um, is there any frustration that you have? And why did you screw up the B button? Uh, yeah. That's it. Sorry, I think the two core things I missed. I screwed something up and I don't know what. Okay, so uh, you screwed the B button. Oh, the B button, okay. Yeah. And then the previous one was the frustration with having Emacs? Uh, with, with, with having VI um, as the, like, you know, the command line uh, set dash or whatever it is. So currently, like, oh, right. 
you you were realizing that you were using uh, Emacs um, and not set dash vi so I guess you didn't put it into your batch profile or whatever it is and why is that I did and if I ever pair with you I'll probably do the first thing I'll do on your terminal is set it and if you walk away for a toilet break I'll probably put it in your bash prompt as well okay <laughs> uh, so so yeah I Clearly, that's the one thing that I do, and I'm just like, how do I make that as a default? How do I SSH into a server and immediately tell it to always do set minus O? So yes, I do that. The way, do you want, I mean, if you want, I could, I could stuff up my B button again, but, but basically I put the wrong thing in the wrong thing, and then, and then it just didn't work. <laughs> On Sunday night, right? When I was sitting over a cocktail with my wife and showing her the presentation. This things didn't work. Yeah. Where is somewhere you can't currently get VI that you wish you could? Well, Elixir for a long time, right? But I was researching this talk and I said, oh, I'm not going to learn Elixir. I can't even do this. But then there was a RL rat. Uh, no, there's a number of places. One, I was in uh, developer tools in Chrome and I thought, huh. I want to search the, last, the history of here or I want to jump around or do things like that. And I thought, oh, how would you even do that? Uh, so, so maybe things like developer tools in Chrome. Um, as I said, you know, once you kind of get hooked, it's just your normal way of moving around. And I'm not, I don't use VI day to day. I just use it on the command line. So day to day, I'm quite happy using a bit of mouse and, and this, that and the other. But um, when I'm on the command line, or anywhere else I need to type, then I prefer that. So the only one I can think of is, is Chrome Developer Tools. Can't you do all of these things in Emacs mode? Just the keys are different? Yes. So, look, Emacs, I'm sure you can. Uh, <laughs> I did start researching it, and uh, it's interesting because a number of these things you kind of start looking at, oh, I want to change. Uh, so one of the things I, I'd often do is, is in, in, in certain places is have an IP address in my command, or like, oh, the IP address is wrong, or maybe there's a URL, and I want to say, oh, I want to cut to the first slash, so I want to CT slash to replace that whole bit of text. Now, I looked at Emacs, researching this talk. <laughs> God, it's a lot of work. Um, I looked at, e I was researching Emacs for a VI talk to say, because I wanted this kind of, hey, these are the equivalents. I couldn't find a lot of these equivalents. They were hard to find. And some of them seemed to me like you could do in Emacs, but you may not be able to do on the command line, kind of felt. Now, if somebody, if, you, if you're willing to prove me wrong, then all I would do is say, I'd update the talk and I'd say, look, here are, the, here are the equivalent. I don't mind which ones you use. What I do mind is, as developers, that we do have some level of ability to do these things. So even if you don't know control A and control E, or don't know control R, uh, then start learning those things. Was there a question at the end, at the back? I can repeat if you just, if we want to say. Yeah, So it's interesting, I, I think, oh, right. So the question is, I don't use Vim why, from my day-to-day -day development. What do I use and why? what value does it give me? My general view on a lot of these things is I want to come to a machine and not have to do anything. I don't want to set things up. I don't want to change things. I don't want, I, I don't want non-default things to happen because I want to deliver value to the customer and I believe the best way of doing that is in a pairing environment. And if I'm pairing and somebody jumps on my machine and they go, oh, you haven't got my alias for this or you don't have this, this, this version of this or whatever else, I kind of go, well, to me, that's something that, does, that takes away from the ability just to deliver value. The other thing is I tend to think, maybe I'm wrong, but I tend to think I'm pretty busy. Every day I get up at five, I run the dog, feed the kids, I do all the washing, I've got four kids. And you know what? I would love to sit down and learn all the VI things, but I just don't have time for that. And I, as I said, I love when people show me their setups and I go, oh, this is amazing. 
But to me, it's one I want to sit at any machine and feel comfortable. I want other people to feel, feel comfortable. A pairing environment for me is the best way to be productive and, and, and all those shortcuts, as much as fun as they are, even some of these ones on the command line, they're actually not necessarily getting in the way of getting work done. So my view is don't touch the mouse and don't change any settings apart from set minus OVR. Thank you.